Hello gorgeous beings! So I just finished the Dolphin Healing Collective which was amazing. So the replay is already on my YouTube channel uh, where we supported the um, freedom of all orcas and I was feeling like I got my light on, I did like a little bit of makeup, I'm feeling like let's keep talking. So I wanted to share something that it has been on my heart for a while now that I've wanted to talk about and to really bring forth. And I think I will be continuing to bring this forth in many different ways because I think this is so important. And essentially what I wanna to talk to you today about is the flaw in money manifestation teachings. And this is so important. So first, to begin this discussion, what I want to sort of anchor into the field is that I believe that we come forth in this world to really embody either divine feminine frequency, a beautiful mix of androgynous frequency where it's both and or some people are here to embody the divine masculine frequency. So something that's really important to just understand, of course, is that we live in a patriarchal world still and we are healing from it and creating a new society, but still it is patriarchal, which means that the majority of energy and teachings that are brought forth are brought forth from a masculine lensing and are going to be more resonant with those beings who are here to embody a more masculine em embodiment and really hold the codes of the divine masculine, which is super, super beautiful. However, because I am someone who is here to anchor primarily the divine feminine frequencies, and I also tend to attract mostly people in my audience who are here to anchor in divine feminine frequencies, no matter what kind of body you're in, that doesn't matter, it's the, the frequencies. Um, I will say that I've noticed a major flaw uh, in the money manifestation teachings that we all are sort of being inundated with, okay? So for me, this is how it looked like, and it's like I'm still sort of figuring out this new vibe, okay? So basically a lot of the money manifestation teachings are very like external based, right? They're very like, okay, what do you want? What do you want specifically? Do you want $10,000 a month? Do you want, um, you know, this house? Do you want this new car? Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna visualize it. We're gonna visualize that amount of money. We're gonna celebrate it like it's already happened. And we are gonna maybe write about that it's already happened. And we're just gonna pump up our vibes like it happened, it happened, it happened. And we're just gonna just release any belief systems that might be in the way, such as, you know, that's too much money or whatever it is, okay. So one thing I wanna share about these teachings is they work. I continue to practice an aspect of those teachings some of the time, um, and they do work. But what I found and what got me so like, ugh, like, because I've manifested quite a bit of money that way, to be honest. Um, but what I found is when I stopped doing the manifestation work every single day, it also stopped working. So it was almost like, I just felt like this start and go feast and famine energy, right? Of like, okay, I'm really committed. I'm feeling like I'm in a good space right now. I have a lot of energy. Let's do money manifestation work. Okay. Yay, you know, $10,000 a month coming in on my business. Yay, this is amazing. That feels so good. I'm pumping myself up. But then again, once I stop doing that 30 day practice or whatever it is, um, but and again, it, it works. <laughs> it does work. Um, I would feel, and also I would feel resistant to doing it sometimes if I was really in a feminine, um, really like, you know, mushy space where I just wanted to like rest on the earth and just like, which happens a lot. Um, I just wasn't really attracted to doing that. It didn't feel resonant with my vibration. And again, when I stopped doing it, I would see that eventually the money would stop flowing as much. And so I'm like, okay, like this doesn't, and then it, like at some point I just kind of gave up. I was like, this is stupid. Like I hear some over this, like everyone shut the fuck up about your stupid life. <laughs> teachings i'm like something's not working here something's not in alignment here for me and this is where i'm at now which i really want to share with you is okay one 
if I'm in a more, if I'm here to embody the divine masculine energy and the divine masculine energy is more, there is a more outward focus. He's more goal oriented. Let's build, let's create someone that's probably going to really resonate and that style of manifestation and that style of abundance manifestation is probably going to really just resonate for that person. And you'll see that a lot of people that are embodied in their divine masculine, and you can just tell ah, that's their sweet spot. That's what they're here to do are all about this. Visualize it, go get it, visualize it, see it, celebrate it. Like it's done. Breathe into it. Ah! <laughs> Tony Robbins. <laughs> and I'm like, Calm down. Love you, bless you, but no. Uh, but yes, 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 but not for me. Okay. So when, when we talk about the feminine, and if you're someone who's here to really embody the divine feminine energies, or, or a beautiful mix of both, um, the feminine is naturally more internal. She's more yin. She's more like in this inner space. So what I realize about wealth consciousness now is that I wasn't spending nearly enough time in my wealth consciousness practice at the core and the foundation of what true abundance really means and where it comes from, which is the light of your soul. Okay, the light of your soul is the abundance. And so there's two different sort of modes that we can see. One, in my wealth consciousness practice, I'm being present with the light of my soul. Maybe I'm seeing myself as a golden ball of light and I'm affirming, may I know myself as the light of my soul. I am the true wealth of my soul. I am that I am. And you're feeling and you're connecting in communion with the divinity and the limitlessness that you are, that I am. We're gonna go a little bit deeper into this in a second to help you really get that and feel that at a deeper level. That's the foundation and that is the more feminine oriented way of walking the wealth consciousness path in my perspective because it's centered within and we all have a mix of divine masculine and feminine energies and from our wisdom within, when we're anchored in this self-worth, because it's our soul light, so we're anchored in this self-worth of our soul light, there will be moments where our soul light is saying, oh my goddess, I'm so excited to be in that divine masculine energy and visualize something and get so happy about it because I'm co-creating. But for me, more often than not right now, my practice and my happy space seems to be being in the frequency of my self-worth, clearing out my root chakra of deep ancestral self-worth issues, and activating the knowingness of the wealth of my soul. So if I'm activated and I'm in communion with the very divinity and wealth of my soul, and I'm like, wow, my soul is limitless light. I am the blessing. I am royalty. I'm spiritual royalty. I am abundance. What's going to happen is this realization that money is a fractal. Money is a child of abundance. So you sitting here as abundance incarnate, recognizing money is a fractal of my abundant nature. In some ways, I am money's master. I don't love that terminology, but for lack of a better word. And as we sit in this place of abundance, I am the abundance and money is a fractal of abundance, recognizing money is me. I am one with money. For me, this is a place of wealth consciousness that one, goes straight to the core of what's actually happening, and two, is the exact same thing as our practice of communing with our sovereignty, with our mother, father, God, source energy. So before I would feel that my wealth consciousness practice was almost taking me out of my body. It was almost taking me out of my space of I have everything, I am everything right here, right now. And it was guiding me to go, okay, well, I'm in this different life and I have this and I have this and I'm so happy. Yay! 
and then I'd come back and I'd actually feel a little bit split. I'd feel like, okay, well, I just vibrated that and that was all good and I was like high for half an hour, but now I'm here and it just doesn't feel like I was really spending time in my core and my sovereignty. And now as I practice my wealth consciousness practice, and for me right now, that looks like me saying, okay, for about 20 minutes a day, I'm sitting down to focus on wealth consciousness, whether that's self-worth, cleansing my root chakra temple, being with the light of my soul, or doing some of the more traditional wealth consciousness practices. Excuse me, I'm just going to have some water. If they feel accurate and alive for me at that moment. <clears throat> so before I close... And I've been talking for like an hour and a half straight. So I guess my voice is like, <laughs> lady. Um, but, <clears throat> okay. So before I close, I want to share with you something that happened for me in meditation the other day that I saw that really supported uh, this for me. Okay. So again, we're speaking about Honoring the light of our soul as the abundance, the divinity that we are is abundance, that we're not attracting abundance, that we are abundance, and that we anchor into this place. Abundance is is us, so we see it and magnetize it everywhere. And then we're also honoring this deep self-worth that we're worthy of the light that we truly are. I could probably and probably will make like 500 videos about all the nuances of this because self-worth and self-forgiveness is so important here. We have to feel worthy of the light that we are and we're on that journey. We have to forgive ourselves for where we feel like we might have messed up because that will affect our feelings of worthiness. And this allows for a much more sustainable experience of wealth consciousness a path with wealth, wealth consciousness and money manifestation that is rooted in and in alignment with our feminine embodiment and our feminine missions on this planet that's not getting caught up in how the divine masculine goes about and does something and tries to say that, well, this is how we need to be then because it's just not the case for so many of us. Um, so the final thing I want to share with you, I was in meditation the other day and I was meditating on something that I think Kyra said. I don't know. Someone said. And she said basically that, you know, when we leave, and we know this, when we leave, we don't take anything with us but our souls. When we die, we don't take anything with us except our souls. And I was meditating on that. And I said, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because our souls... So our souls aren't taking our money, our souls aren't taking our achievements, our souls aren't taking our homes when we die, not our clothes, not even our nice crystals, but maybe etherically we take them. <laughs> um, okay, so this, but the soul is so highly intelligent, the soul is only going to take true wealth with it. The soul, so imagine yourself, you're leaving this planet right now and you're a white golden ball of light leaving the planet. And your soul says, I'm only taking what's truly valuable. And that is who I am and all of the soul growth that I experienced in this lifetime. So I'm only taking my soul because the soul says, I'm only taking what's genuinely, authentically, in essence, valuable to me, which is me. I am the abundance. I am the royalty. I am the riches. I'm leaving with everything I need. And when I was meditating on this, I was like, I really got it to a new level. I was like, oh, I am the golden white ball of light. I am the true wealth of the soul. I am the soul. And I was just in this space, just experiencing myself as light. And what also supports my practice is asking for a transmutation of anything that is causing me to not feel worthy of the true light that I am. Because if you're in a space where you're in communion with the light of your soul, and you're also in a practice of asking for the transmutation of anything that blocks your feelings of worthiness to receive and embody the light of your own soul, then you are in a complete state of abundance consciousness and money will flow and pour in 
because money is always actually flowing and pouring in. The universe is always blessing us. It's just about being in communion with the blessings. And we do that through being in communion with the light of our own soul. And the self-worth and the self-forgiveness pieces. So again, we could do a whole course on this, but I'm just going to leave that there for now just to, you know, support you. And, you know, if you are like me, which is saying, you know, the traditional money manifestation practices just don't feel like a fit. There's something that feels off about constantly visualizing something external happening. It's almost like we're hanging out in the outer reaches of our energy field rather than the true priestess calling, which is to embody the light of our essence. And again, it's not wrong or bad to do those traditional money manifestation teachings. I still do them. But for me right now, my path, it's about what, what is the balance? What is the balance? Because I want to be in the foundation of wealth consciousness, which is the light of my soul as my primary practice. And if my soul says, hey, there's something that I really desire, such as a crystalline Lemurian home temple, then I am going to affirm to the universe, I'm so excited that I'm living in my crystalline Lemurian home temple with amazing community around me. And that feels good to my soul because it is my soul speaking from within me. It's soul light saying, this is the next part of my journey begin to affirm it. It's already in the tubes for me, but I'm going to affirm it and align with it just to really allow that to manifest in divine perfect timing and put myself in the frequency of that soul mission alignment because everything that my soul desires is feeding my soul's mission. So I'll leave that with you. And I also do want to mention that um, if you want to sit with me one-on-one, if you like my frequency, if you feel that there is something in my energy field that is pinging you, that there might be a really beautiful energy uh, that I can support you with, I am offering 25% off uh, one-on-one sessions with me right now. So what I do in a one-on-one session with you is I look at your chakras, your energy field, I call upon your higher self, your spirit guides and your angels, and I communicate with your guides and your angels, and I channel through information and activations and healings that are going to support you in aligning more fully with your soul's mission. So every session is unique, but they're all very powerful. And in some cases, they're life-changing. Um, I think yesterday, you know, yesterday I had a couple of sessions. They were both really beautiful and powerful. One in particular, I really feel that this session has changed the, the, the journey for this woman because there was such potent um, shifts that came through about how she can relate to herself. Uh, that were really powerful for me to witness and such an honor for me to get to um, facilitate. So uh, the link to get the 25% off, uh, so it's only $150 US. I shouldn't say only because that's relative and I don't want that to seem like, uh, yeah, but it's $150, uh, usually $200 for a session. Uh, so uh, it's one hour. The link to sit with me is in my bio on Instagram, including the 25% off code or if you're seeing this on YouTube, it's just below, and it's only until February 22nd, okay? So I hope that this served you today. Um, Let me know if this uh, helped you, uh, and I'm so, you know, inspired to continue this conversation because I think it's really important uh, for us, you know, divine feminine embodiments and priestesses and, you know, the wild feminine types. I mean, we're doing so amazing, and there's so much good content that is coming out, but it's also can be really Really confusing because still to be honest most of it and more of it is very much resonant with either patriarchy or a divine masculine lensing and we don't even know it because we're so conditioned to think that that's just how manifestation is and that's what we need to be doing and if we don't feel in alignment with there's just something wrong with us so you know that's not the case so so much love many blessings and I'll see you soon